Good morning. I'm Janet. Welcome to Grains 101. I'm Laverne. Um, with the success of the last food demo that the Four Year Health Committee put on, they invited us again to do another food demo, and this time we're talking about whole grains. Um, health Canada recommends that Canadians aim to get at least half of their recommended grain uh, daily amount from whole grains, and that would mean three to four servings from the seven to eight that are recommended daily. Whole grains are um, different than the refined grains, and there's a picture of whole grains on your handout. A whole grain is the entire seed of the plant. It consists of three layers, the outer bran layer, the middle endosperm layer, and the tiny germ layer, which is the part that actually grows into another plant. When grains are refined or processed, frequently those outer layers are stripped away, removing a lot of the essential nutrients. And so that's why we recommend that half your daily uh, recommended values are whole grains. Whole grains um, are great sources of fiber, carbohydrates, proteins, and they are typically very low in fat. They also contain lots of essential nutrients and vitamins, such as the B vitamins, vitamin E, folic acid, calcium, phosphorus, <coughs> iron, copper, and zinc. Um, if you look at the back of your handout, you see a picture of whole grains with a description, various whole grains, there are more than what are on here, with a description of the length of time it takes to cook them and a little bit about them. And also over on that side table, we have some plastic bags that are labeled with various whole grains to um, see if you recognize them. Whole grains have many unique features in practically each one of them. For example, did you know that bulgur produced from wheat ranges in color from cream to brown and has a nice mild nutty flavor? Since it's pre-cooked, it's quick to serve, and quick to, uh, to put in things like side dishes, salads, and pilaf, which is, pilaf is merely a cooked grain uh, made with uh, any kind of seasoned um, broth, beef broth, chicken broth, uh, vegetable broth, or you can even make your own broth. Today, we're featuring two of these grains. One is spelt, from which we've made porridge ahead of time for time's sake. And the second is a very simple quinoa salad. we just like to say that the spelt didn't take very long to, to cook. It's, it's approximately the same as cooking oatmeal. And your recipe for cooking mm -hmm. the uh, spelt porridge is, is right on your um, right on your hand. Out. It tells you to use a um, quarter teaspoon of vanilla, but our experience has been that you can use at least half a teaspoon of vanilla to sort of bump up the flavor. And for those who like it, you could even add a little salt. It doesn't take any longer to make the spelt porridge than it does to cook a bagel and pour a bowl of cold cereal. And it's much better for you. It can, you can use any kind of dried fruit in it or even um, fresh fruit if you prefer. And you could use yogurt or milk with it as well if you prefer anything. You know, it's very flexible. Our next dish is quinoa. We're doing a quinoa salad demonstration. Um, we pre-cooked the quinoa, again, to save time. How many of you have used quinoa already? Yes, very popular. So um, it's important before you use quinoa that you rinse it thoroughly under cold water first to remove the powder that's on the outside called saponin. Um, and then you cook it uh, 12 to 15 minutes, very similar to rice, cover it and steam it with the proper amount of water. Um, and while it was cooking, we chopped the cucumber, the tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and the spinach over here. And Janet is beginning to uh, mix it together, and she's starting by, she, first she added the dressing, right? Right. 
to the um, quinoa so that it absorbs the flavor and she stirred it in. And now all she's doing is adding the chopped vegetables. So it doesn't take very long. You have the recipe again on the back of your form. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that with this recipe, as with any of these whole grain recipes, you can substitute any of the whole grains. You could do this with wheat berries or um, what else, what else? Oh, bulgar, any of the grains that we have, brown rice, uh, to um, add flavor and a little bit of, a lot of fiber to the salad um, to make it more of a, a filling dish than a, than a light salad. Just you, a moment after I toss this salad, um, we'd like you to come and sample it. And you can see once you've got all the ingredients together, it doesn't take more than 20 minutes to throw a salad like this together. It took us a little longer because we were doing a lot of chopping, but for just one, uh, you know, just a family, it would be much quicker. You could also put other raw vegetables in here, the same way you can substitute quinoa, grated mm -hmm. carrots. When you're choosing whole grains or grains, it's very important to read the labels because products labeled whole wheat, multi-grain, and organic aren't necessarily whole grains. The flour or grains in the product may actually consist of little or no whole grains. Look for the words whole grain on your labels, followed by the name of the grain as one of the first ingredients on the, uh, the ingredient list. We have some quick, quick tips for make, using whole grains. You can make a pilaf out of barley or quinoa as a side dish. Use buckwheat flour the next time you make pancakes. Try spelt or mixed or porridge, millet porridge. You can mix it with apples, cinnamon, or any favorite spice or fresh fruit. Add some quinoa or barley to salads. And soaking or toasting whole grains first can reduce the cooking time by half. So please come and help yourself.